I welcome all of you to the class. In today's class, we'll be talking about the strain energy in case of the beams. As far as the method that is that we are concerned with right now is, we are actually concerned with the energy methods, okay? Uh, we are actually trying to talk about the energy method. So what is an energy method? We are trying to talk about, sorry. This terminal, this is something wrong. Oh, yes, no. So we are talking about the energy methods. Okay, as far as the energy methods are concerned, these are the methods that we will be using for, for calculating the deflection of beam. We have to use this energy method for calculating, for calculating the deflection of deflection of beams. The idea is quite simple. How the idea is quite simple, because we know. If we have, say, for example, a simply supported beam, okay, and this simply supported beam is subject to some load, okay, so the beam will certainly deflect like this, fine. So this point that was initially here has now translated to this very position by amount delta, okay, and this has happened under the influence of the load P. So this P has done some work. Work done by the load is equal to P into this delta. So if we know how much work is done, if we know this P, then we can calculate this value of the deflection. This is a fundamental idea. This is how actually the energy method works. So the energy method works and the working of energy method is not different from the previous or the other methods, except for the fact that the energy method calculates the work which is done by the force in causing the deflection in the beam. So this deflection multiplied by the force gives you <coughs> gives you the work done. So if you know this work, if you know this load, then we can calculate this deflection. Okay. Now, we know for an elastic material, the graph between the stress and strain happens to be a linear graph. There is a sense of linearity uh, between the stress and strain, okay? So the graph is essentially like this. So this is what you call as, this is, this was our stress axis. This is the strain axis. And this is essentially how stress and strain behave in what we call as an elastic region. This is how stress and strain behaves in an elastic, in an elastic region. Fine. Stress is the graph between stress and strain is a straight line. So the area between the stress and strain happens to be in the form of a triangle. So that the area of this triangle is equal to half of base. Let's suppose the value of strain here is eta multiplied by the perpendicular. Perpendicular is this much. This is the value of the stress. Let's call this as sigma. Okay, that is sigma. And I told you in the previous class that the, the area under the stress and the strain, or we say the product of stress and strain, this gives you the energy density. This is energy density. That is energy stored per unit volume, what we call as strain energy density, strain energy stored per unit volume. We say this is strain energy density, okay, is the product between stress and the strain. The product between stress and strain is the strain energy density. We can further write this as, as far as strain, we know from Young's Hooke's law, stress is equal to Young's modulus times strain. Therefore, we can write, the strain energy is U is equal to half of, in place of this eta, we can write sigma by E multiplied by this sigma. That becomes sigma square divided by two times E. This is the general equation that gives us the strain energy density. So strain energy density, I told you that this equation gives you the strain energy density because the product between stress and strain is what you call as a strain energy density. So this is strain energy per unit volume, fine. Now, if say, for example, the machine element is of some shape, 
okay the machine element is say for example it is having some volume v fine if you take a small volume out of this machine element if you take a small volume dv then we write strain energy density is equal sigma square divided by two times e this is strain energy per unit volume okay how much will be the strain energy just try to clear this first that we are writing sigma square by two times e is strain energy per unit volume so if you multiply sigma square by 2e by the volume that gives you the strain energy fine now we have a small machine element let's take a machine element take a small volume out let's suppose its volume is dv for this small volume dv what will be the small strain energy du will be equal sigma square by 2e multiplied by dv what will be the total strain energy that will be the integration of this term okay that is total strain energy is equal sigma square by 2e multiplied by dv this is the total strain this volume is this integration is taken with respect to the volume v now see this sigma term defines the strain energy to us that is if we know for in case of beams the normal stress sigma is given by the fluxural formula it is equal to m y divided by i therefore what will be the strain energy u will be equal to integral volume integral sigma square in place of sigma square i will write m y by i m y by i and you have 1 by 2 e uh, dv okay so this can further be written as let me write it here this can be written as integral m square y square m square y square by i square and you have 2 e dv look at this dv dv is the volume if this volume if the thickness of this element is dx and if the area is da then we can write dv is equal to area into thickness that is dv into dx therefore this expression will change the strain energy will become equal integral integral of m square divided by we'll write we'll do a little bit of manipulation twice e i square da dx okay this is a volume integral fine we can and you have your y square as well okay y square we can break this integral you have integration with respect to area integration with respect to volume we can write this as integral of m square by two times e i square and you have your y square da i will write here y square da and you have dx out of this bar so this expression can therefore be written as this can therefore be written as the strain energy u is equal integral but i will not take a volume integral this is a volume integral everywhere okay so we'll take m square divided by 2e i square and integral y square da what i have done we have divided this integral into two parts okay fine <laughs> because we had a volume integral a volume integral can be written as an area integral and a position integral or a displacement integral okay that's what we have done this can therefore be written as integral 
m square by 2e i square. And if you look at this integral y square dA, integral y square dA is nothing. It is the moment of inertia i. This is how you actually define the i. Okay, And you have your dx. This i and one i will cancel. So total strain energy will become equal to integral m square by 2e i dx. This is the total strain energy of the beam. Okay, so when a beam is subjected to load, when a beam is in bending, when a beam is in uh, when a beam is subject to load, it creates bending moment m. And in response to the bending moment m, the total strain energy stored in the beam is integral m square by 2 ei d. So please be careful about this expression. And based on this expression, we have a problem out here. Okay. It says. Determine the elastic strain energy due to bending of a cantilevered beam. EI is constant. So you have a cantilevered beam here. Okay. So what you have to do? You cut the beam anywhere. Okay. Find the value of the bending moment M. Okay. Then use the expression total strain energy is equal to integral from 0 to L. M square by 2 EI dx. E is constant. I is constant. 2 is constant. So we need to find the value of this M. We need to find how this M varies as a function of x. The solution is given m is equal to minus w x square by 2. So m is equal to minus w x square divided by 2. You will do it yourself. And then substitute the value of m in this expression, get the value of total strain energy is w square l raised power 4 divided by 40 ei. So you should be fully acquainted with these concepts. So what used to be done, you just have to find the value of the m. Okay. Now, once you know the value, you don't, you don't need this transfer share. I'm not interested in this because we have to do something else. We are dealing with the beams where we are taking uh, many other things uh, where we are only dealing with the normal stresses, okay? So before I go ahead, what is very important for us is to tell you about a term that we'll be using to find the deflection of the beams, okay? Uh, that is called Castellanos term. Castellanos term applied to beam beams okay so i will not do the derivation of this equation right now but uh, what we'll be doing is uh, i will be talking about the the the, uh, the 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 utilization of this equation okay the utilization of this equation the utilization of this equation is like this let me share one more screen with you let me take a white share so what i have to discuss based on this concept is what we call as the Castellanos theorem. I will be discussing first of all the Castellanos theorem. So what is a Castellanos theorem? Fine. In order to make you understand what is Castellanos theorem, let me take a beam, okay? Let's suppose we have a beam and this beam is say, for example, a cantilever. And this cantilever beam is subjected to a point load. Okay. The magnitude of this load is say, for example, P. And the length of this beam is say, for example, L. This is end A, this is end B. Now the question in front of us is, question says, calculate the deflection and slope of the beam at point B. Calculate. At point B, calculate the slope and deflection. Calculate the deflection and slope of the beam at point B. Okay, here where you are applying the load. So what you have to do, you have to do nothing except find the value of the bending moment in the beam M. Okay, first step you have to find the bending moment in the beam. So let's find the bending moment. So as we went on to find the bending moment, let's suppose here we know in a cantilever beam here will be reaction. And we'll be having the moment reaction. 
at end A, what we call as MA. And at end A, we'll be having the reaction. That's what we call as RA, okay? So write down the equations of equilibrium. The equations of equilibrium are RA minus P is equal to zero, which implies RA is equal to P, fine? Also, sum up all the moments about an axis passing through point A and put that equal to zero, which implies we have MA, we have minus PL equal to zero. That is fixed moment reaction, MA is equal to P into L. Okay, call this as equation second, fine? Right. Now take a section out here. Say shear force here is V and bending moment here is M. This M we have to find, okay? Such that this section is taken at a distance X from the fixed end. Therefore, this is V, fine? Take moments about an axis passing through the point V where we are taking the section. Then we have M and you have plus MA and you have minus RA into X, this is equal to zero. Therefore, the value of this M becomes RA into X, RA is equal to P, so this becomes P into X, minus MA, MA is equal to PL, okay? So this becomes equal to P times X minus L, this is the value of, this is how the bending moment varies in this B, okay? This is how M varies in this beam. M is equal to P times X minus L, fine? Now use U, calculate the total strain energy. U is equal to integral from zero to L, M square by two EI DX. Fine, two EI is constant. You can take them out of integration. Two EI can be taken out of integration. So we have integral from zero to L. In place of M, we can write P times X minus L and you have your square DX, okay? So that becomes one by two EI, fine, one by two EI, P square, X square, plus P square L square minus two times P L X. Okay, and you have integral going from zero to L. D of X. Okay, so that becomes equal to one by two times E I P square so this becomes P square by three X cube, okay? Going from zero to L plus P square L square, integral DX is equal to L, going from zero to L, minus two times P L, integral X is X square by two, going from zero to L, okay? So that becomes equal to one by two EI P square L cube by three plus P square L cube minus P L cube. Okay, this P L cube and P L cube will cancel. So we will write the total strain energy in the beam is equal P square L Q divided by six times E I. Okay, this is the total strain energy of the B. So we have calculated only the total strain, but what we have to calculate? We have to calculate the deflection and the slope. Now we'll use what is known as the Cassiano's theorem. So what does the Cassiano's theorem state? Okay. Yes. We explain it to separate a bit of a TV one to a bit of a TV one. 
हाँ हाँ मुझे समझ नहीं आ रहा तो एक बार ही रिवाइज कीजिए वाला स्टेप वन डिवाइड बाई टू ही जहाँ पे आपने लिमिट्स दिए इसको ये वाला नीचे वाला सर नीचे वाला सबसे नीचे वाला जो लास्ट में दिया था हाँ ये वन बाई टू ई आई इंटेग्रेशन से बाहर आ जाएगा ठीक है सर ये वाला नहीं सर लास्ट वाला सर लास्ट वाला यही यही हाँ सर हाँ ठीक है तो यहाँ आएगा पी स्क्वायर एल क्यू बाई थ्री वो ठीक है एल स्क्वायर और है एल फ्रॉम जीरो टू एल तो वो एल ही आएगा एल इंटू एल स्क्वायर होगा एल क्यू ठीक है यस सर फिर है ये टू और ये टू कैंसिल हो जाएगा ये है पी इंटू एल इंटेग्रल यह है एक्स गोइंग फ्रॉम जीरो टू एल तो ये एल ही आएगा दैट इज एल स्क्वायर इंटू एल इज एल क्यू ठीक है तो ये पी एल क्यू ना वट विल कैलकुलेट फर्स्ट वी है कैंसिल हो जाएगा फिर यहाँ पे हाँ गो ना कैंसिल प्लस माइनस ये ये वाला तो पी स्क्वायर है यहाँ पे वो है पी एल क्यूब अच्छा ओके ओके सॉरी 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 ने कैंसिल किया सो यू विल कम आउट इक्वल वन बाय टू ई आई वन बाय टू ई आई पी स्क्वायर एल क्यूब बाय थ्री प्लस पहले आपको हर हमेशा कैसे ऑन फॉर्म में सबसे पहले आपको क्या करना है यू हैव कैलकुलेट द टोटल स्ट्रेट एनर्जी ओके नाउ सी वट द स्लोप इज इक्वल कैसे ऑन फॉर्म से डिफ्लेक्शन विश कैसे ऑन फॉर्म कैश कैसे ऑन फॉर्म से deflection deflection is equal del u that is the derivative of the total strain energy with respect to the load p this gives you the deflection at point p try to understand you have to find the deflection at point b where load p is acting okay so what you do first of all you calculate the total strain energy that is u okay then you differentiate this u with respect to the load acting at the point where you have to find the deflection we have to find the deflection at point b so how much is the load acting at point b it is p so if you have to calculate the deflection at point b you have to see how much is the load acting at point b and you have to differentiate the total strain energy with respect to that very load that's what we are doing del u by del p this gives the deflection due to load p or deflection at point b okay so that is equal now differentiate this with respect to p you will get 1 by 2 ei deflection of derivative of p square lq with respect to this p will be uh, 2p so it will be 2p lq by 3 plus 2p l q minus l q okay that can further be simplified as so that can further be simplified as 1 by 2 ei this is 8 P L Q by three minus L Q. This is what gives us the deflection at B. There is something missing. आपने यहाँ पे टू पी लिया सर क्या बोल रहे हो सर ठीक है ठीक है ओके दिस इज हाउ यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट द डिफ्लेक्शन
Okay. Now in the same way, Okay, this much, fine. In the same way, if you go back to your book. For example, you have a beam. Okay. This beam is subjected to two loads. It is subject to a uniformly distributed load as well as to a concentrated load. You have to find the deflection at point B. So first of all, what you will find you will first of all find the total strain and you will first of all find the bending moment m once you calculate the bending moment m in this beam then you will calculate the total strain energy once you calculate the total strain energy in this beam okay then what you will do you will take del u by del p that will give you the deflection at point p that will give you the deflection at point p. That's how you please solve this question. This is solved. Have a look at this. Try to solve this question. Okay. Yes, almost. So some questions given on question. Yes, almost maybe there. Just solve these few questions. Solve this question to yourself. With Castellanos, we'll continue with Castellanos questions tomorrow from other book okay i will yes. we'll continue from castellanos theorem from one more book and i will tell you about the what is known as the uh, what is called the unit method or the unitary methods okay we'll do that tomorrow but please solve these two questions first okay so if you have questions you can ask. Any question? Also ready for class. Okay, we'll meet tomorrow. Thank you.